How y'all doing today? Hey, buddy. It's the Ungodly Geeks, and we talk about dumb shit. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. And we're bringing you today... Some dumb shit. A lot of dumb shit. <laughs> because that's what we're really, really good at. We are really good at dumb shit. Um, mm -hmm. An African-American security guard asked a student not to call him the N-word. Guess what that happened to... Guess what the outcome of that was? The security guard got fired. Because apparently the school has a zero tolerance policy on racial slurs which is the dumbest fucking shit i've ever heard so did the kids say it first yes and then basically okay. what was going on because i read this story before uh, i came into this because that's I'm not where gonna, my brain locked up yeah like i'm that... not gonna i'm not gonna reread the story i'm not gonna yeah. read the story out loud i'm just gonna summarize what happened uh, because i read this story a while back like yeah. about i don't know five or six days ago to make sure it was news of the stupid worthy so there was a, an incident in a Madison West High School in Wisconsin. Um, mm. You know, there was a there was a fight. There was some violence breakout. Principal had to call for security. Security comes along, breaks it up, whatever. Um, while he's detaining the student and blah, 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 the student's continuing to be aggressive and being a little teenage shithead like teenage shitheads are. Yeah. And was calling him the N-word using the actual word. Yeah. And security guard, who is black, who has the N-word passed because he's black. That's how it works. Um, sat there and said, please don't call me that. And he said the word out. Yeah. And it didn't. he didn't say it at first. He just kept saying, hey, don't call me that. Please don't yeah. call me that. Because he doesn't want to be demeaned in that way or whatever. However, whatever it was from his perspective, it doesn't matter at yeah. this point. Because he was he was asking him, don't do that. And uh, he after a while, student kept just egging him on and kept doing it. He said, please don't call me N-word. Yeah. Principal heard that and fired him because they have a zero tolerance policy on racial slurs. Yeah, let that sink in for a minute. I'm gonna let that dead space just roll. I just my 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 thought is that not only like is that ridiculous. Yeah, right. He should have had a pass to just beat the shit out of the kid at this point. Just yes. just whoop the shit out of him. Maybe teach him a lesson. I mean, you, you say don't, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, yes. right? This is a stupid game that the kid is playing. Beat the shit out of him, and he, there's <laughs> exactly. a stupid prize. This is what he gets. He's, he should have gotten an ass beating, not gotten the security guard fired. Yeah, but apparently, security guard exercising his right to not be called a shitty word yeah. by asking him, "Hey, don't do that." Um, and that's not like a freedom of speech thing for anyone who's going to get up in arms over that. Okay, you have freedom of speech from the government. Private entities can still fuck you over. Yeah. Right. No, it, it, the school, like, they they can. Right. And, and I'm not defending them. They can Absolutely fire somebody not. for this. However, it is a shitty thing to do. I mean, And they okay, should realize that. But to fire, the, fire a black man over using that word in the, it, especially, in the con yeah, especially, especially in the given the context. That's the, the problem fuck is wrong with, with zero you? tolerance policies. Yeah. Is because they always ignore context. Yep. Like the kid gets beat up in school, fights back against his bully to defend himself, Once, which is, yeah. is, which I mean, kids don't have many rights, but I believe one right that isn't alienable to any person, regardless of age or anything, is the right to defend yourself. Yeah. And if the school has a zero tolerance on fighting, then <coughs> he gets uh, expelled or sent to alternate pathways so, or whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. Shit. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. That's crazy. <clears throat> uh, this comes from Detroit. The Metro Times yeah. reported a while, a, little, a few days ago, that a founder's brewing manager claims he didn't know black employee was black. <laughs> I mean, it's like, like I I want to say founders. Have I? It is. It's local to Detroit, I believe. Basically, uh, this, Tracy Evans was fired, mm -hmm. and he's suing uh, for you know racial discrimination. Which I don't know if that's a thing or not. I don't. I don't know the background behind that. I just know that's what he's suing for, and I hope he wins just be, just because. Um, um, but you know, basically, he worked at the founder of Detroit and Grand Rapids allegations alleged a racist internal corporate culture. Some white coworkers exhibited multiple samples of blatant racism. Among other issues, they repeatedly used the N word around him, and a, a management allegedly named a printer he'd used the white guy printer while labeling the printer for lower tier employees the black guy printer. And this is why I hope the guy wins. Okay, so that's that's fucking. Uh, that, yeah, that's just. There's no. You can't argue that that's not 
racist. Yeah. Like, I get it. You're trying to make a joke. It was a bad joke. It's Terrible dumb. Terrible joke. Like, if he had, if, if, if this was somebody that I was friends with, that I knew we could, like, joke about something like that. Right. Then fine. But I'm not going to fucking put white guy printer, black guy printer, like, just taped to the printer as and i wouldn't make this joke in a business setting period ever. right this would have to be one of my close friends that i know they'd probably make the joke before me right like <laughs> oh my god that I, is so retarded it, it, this is the dumbest shit ever and like so he, he got fired um of I, course yeah and wait the guy who brought up the yeah, the guy who Evan Tracy Evans, the, the the person in this thing who is black, yeah. who was fired, and the manager who fired him claimed he didn't know he was black. So the manager's the one who put the notes on the. I don't know who put the notes on it. Okay. Like that, it doesn't say that. It's just management and everybody kind of management allegedly named a printer it used a white guy printer. Okay. While labeling the printer for non-management, the black guy printer. Yeah. So it would be like us going to Walmart. And having like a fancy ass printer in like the management office, and then the printer for the rest of us as a black and white laser printer that half works and sometimes doesn't print anything on the paper it feeds through out like in the general area for us to access. And they called their printer in there the white guy printer and called our printer the black guy printer. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like, why? Just why? And he was fired in retaliations for threatening to meet with human resources. Right. Basically, he's like, hey, you guys are being blatantly racist and I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. which is a perfectly reasonable statement. This is so um, Founders Brewery is the largest craft brew beer brewery in Michigan. Right. Um, which if you know anything about craft beers, that does not mean it's very large. No, no. Yeah. Um, Uh, Although. And they do have, like, multiple locations. Uh, they do. And they so, have one less now. An update to that story is Founder, uh, Founders Brewing uh, is closing its Detroit tap room indefinitely uh, during this uh, racial law, uh, discrimination lawsuit. So they were being racist assholes. They got called out on being racist assholes. And I think they know they're losing this case. Yeah. 100%. They're going to hemorrhage money. Yeah. So they're 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 going to stem that tide by closing a location Close down, this, so, yep. so they don't have to pay for it. Uh, posted this news to their <sighs> Facebook page on Friday. Uh, as has been reported in recent days, Founders has experienced some cha- challenges at its Detroit tap room. We're we've uh, we're dealing with those challenges so that we can continue to serve beer lovers in Detroit. To accomplish that, we would be closing the location until further notice. All of our Detroit employees will be paid during this time, including those who have said via social media that they plan to protest during this closure to call attention to concerns. We have uh, we have committed to working closely with our employees to make any changes to the company that need to be made to ensure a positive future. Those uh, conversations are underway. Unfortunately, this temporary closure is affecting the debut of our popular CBS. The CBS bottle pickup and CBS tapping uh, party won't be happening. As scheduled uh, as scheduled at the Detroit Tap Room, we greatly appreciate all the enthusiasm for the introduction of this year's CBS. Uh, we will be issuing all refunds, yada, yada, yada. Like, okay. That's, that's, that's... And then we thank our customers, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Basically the yeah. typical PR jerk-off. So it sounds like they've gone to this tap room specifically and went... Y'all managers fucked up. Yeah. We're closed because I, I would be surprised if they're not going and taking a fucking like scythe and just slicing through management at that location. Yeah. Because of, from what reading this and then that article yeah. is that they have just like the, they, the dude has just been having racial slurs thrown at yeah, him no, all the no, time. Basically, Employees uh, like have just been basically talking all the shit they want. Management Evans said did little oh about the God. racism he encountered, and he claims he was fired while preparing to make a second formal complaint to human resources about such issues. Yep. The suit is moving through the trial process and is in depositions. That's where founders revealed a startling and arguably ludicrous defense. <laughs> we didn't know the he was The manager who fired Evans is claiming he didn't know that Evans is black. Motherfucker, can you see? Like, can you see? Could you have eyes? Do they function? Are you colorblind? I don't understand. Even if you only saw in shades of gray, you could tell that he was a darker skin tone than your white employees. What is wrong with you? Are you fucking retarded? And so this... 
I, like, I, and like, I'm not gonna go much further to I this. I wish right? I had the sound bite of Rosie uh, Roseanne Barr screaming, "I thought the bitch was black, or I thought the bitch was white." <laughs> All right, so or whatever it is, she screamed out. All right, okay, I'm gonna read this. Okay. I have to read this. This is a transcript of the exchange at the uh, courtroom be- um, between. Evans' attorney, Jack Schultz, Mm -hmm. and the founder's manager, Dominic Ryan, who fired him. Yeah. When did you first meet Tracy Evans? 2011, 2012. We had mutual friends before working there, so... Okay, so you knew Tracy prior to his employment at Founders. We met a few times, yes. Okay, are you aware Tracy is black? What do you mean by that? (laughs) Are you aware Tracy is African-American? I'm not sure of his lineage, so I can't answer that. All right. Are you aware that Tracy is a man of color? What do you mean by that? <laughs> no. Do you do you know? You don't know what it means for someone to be a white person or a black person? I'm asking for clarification. You don't need any. I can promise you that. Well, keep the record as is. Someone's skin color, a white. So that's what you're referring to? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. I know the difference in skin tone. Are you able to identify individuals by their skin tone? What do you mean identify? I mean, have you ever looked at Tracy Evans in your entire life? Have you? That's a that's a genuine question. <laughs> Founder's attorney, objection, argumentative. Founder's attorney, you can answer. Yes. And did you ever realize that Tracy's skin is black? That's not, I mean, his skin is different from mine? Yes. How? What do you mean how? It's a different color. And what is the difference of that color? It's darker. And that means? Objection, vague question. <laughs> that's a vague <laughs> question, your honor. No, it's not. No, it's fucking not. Oh my I mean, God. we could. I this could it. be a one sentence answer, you know. So by your, I guess your testimony is you have no idea if Tracy is a minority, if he's African American. I don't know Tracy's lineage, so I can't speculate on whether he's, if he's from Africa or not. What do you mean lineage from Africa? No, I mean, like, I don't know his DNA. Have you ever met black people who aren't from Africa? Excuse me? Have you ever met a black person born in America? Yes. And you were able. Have you ever met a black person who didn't tell you they were black? Can you rephrase that? Is Barack Obama black? objection to your knowledge i've never met barack obama so i don't what so you don't know if barack obama is black what about michael jordan do you know if michael jordan is black objection i've never met him so you don't know him what about kwame kilpatrick never met him to your not to your knowledge was kwame kilpatrick black i you don't know i don't know (laughs) that is great all right so we're gonna move on yeah um, because if i keep going any further you might that literally, those who are watching us on YouTube, might literally get to see my brain melt out of my ears. Yeah. By the way, Kwame Kilpatrick, if you uh, don't, if you're not familiar with him, he's former uh, mayor, governor of Detroit. Can't remember exactly. Yeah. Uh, he's a huge piece of shit. But he is a giant black man, just for that guy's clarification. <laughs> he's like six and a half feet tall. What does black mean? Yeah. <laughs> Can you define black? I mean, all right, if we're going to get, like, literal, the skin tone is brown. Yeah. Right? But it doesn't matter person at this point. Person of African-American descent. Um, uh, a person I love, of... Well, okay. I love that we have to, like, that oh they have to clarify that in court because that's just kind of how our law works, is that you have to prove that this guy knows what a black person is, and he's that's where he's trying to, like, dodge. Like, if the dude was born in Ireland where... Literally everyone is a pasty white piece of shit. That's <laughs> fine. I fucking get you've ne- but like, yeah. I just you're in America, you know, and not only that, you're in like Michigan, you're in Detroit, you're in these areas where there are a lot of black people. I still love that. He's you know, now. like like how do you not how do you not put that together? Yeah, they, right. They know they're screwed. So uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't get it. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, a botched assassination plot sees Chinese hitmen wheel and deal their way to prison. Pardon me. Five would-be assassins and one mastermind had been jailed for attempted murder following a Chinese court case that revealed the lengths each person involved went in order to avoid actually doing the deed. Huh. So I'm going to sum this up really quickly. A Chinese businessman, that's, this is, this is point number one. Hired a hitman to kill someone. Yeah. Probably a rival. I haven't honestly read into this just yet. But he hires a hitman. That hitman hires another hitman. That hitman hires another hitman. 
That hitman hires another hitman. That hitman hires another hitman who then betrays the first five or so. That's so good. Yeah. In 2013, businessman Tan Yuho, Yui, sorry, Yui, sought the services of hitman in order to murder a competitor offering 2 million yuan, which is around $412,000, for the job, according to an official summary of proceedings from the Nanning Intermediate People's Court. However, that enterprising hitman contracted another hitman to do their job, but at a price around half that of his original commission. Hitman number two then subcontracted to another hitman. So now we're up to three people. Yeah. We're three people deep now. Who then subcontracted to a fourth, who then subcontracted to a fifth. So we're, we're that's actually six people now. We're doing the deep, we're doing the counting. Yeah. Um, the fifth and final hitman got cold feet. So by the time the contract had been passed on to him, the final asking price was reduced to just 100,000 yuan, which is around $20,600 or so. Yeah. So what what I find funny about this is the first guy's like, okay, I know I can get somebody killed for around $500,000. Right. So he hires the hitman, and the hitman goes, this guy's overpaying me. I know I can get somebody no. killed for around $200,000. Yeah, right. Hires another hitman. That dude's like, I'm not doing this. I I, I know this this a hundred thousand, and I can get this dude killed. I don't have to have my uh, get my you know put my money, and I'm pocketing a hundred grand myself. Right. Hires another hitman. This guy's just a lazy piece of shit, and is like, I'm gonna roll the fucking dice. <laughs> um, Chinese publication Beijing News reported the low price. Of- they irked the fifth hitman to such an extent it prompted him to get in touch with the target, Mr. Exactly. Wei, to ask him to fake his own death, a decision that led to the elaborate plot finally unraveling. On Chinese social media, some users are calling for a prominent Chinese film director to turn a f- the farcistical murder plot into a movie, while others are mocking the clumsy subtracting as typical Chinese business. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. This is the Chinese population saying this stuff that's funny i can't believe this is real i thought it was a joke a username i'm not even going to try to pronounce that wrote yeah. on weibo in 2016 all six men were acquitted over lack of evidence but a successful appeal led to the case being reopened the proceedings went on for three years and ended with attempted murder convictions for all involved <laughs> jesus <laughs> like this this is it's just hilarious that's great like six people we're sub like five people were subcontracted to kill one guy each by the and this is getting cheaper. And by because the it was too too little of money, he was pissed. Yeah, that's no you you can't you can't. <laughs> that is some fucking. Apparently, it had to do about Mister Way against this idiot. Um, he was launching two civil lawsuits against him yeah. regarding a shared property property development. Um, so fearing that he was going to lose money on the, over these lawsuits, he decided or, to make that guy go away. Yeah. The court said Tan procured the services of Hitman to kill Mr. Way shortly thereafter. Um, th- this is just, oh my God. I like to think that that first guy he hired is like your typical looking like fucking eye patch. Yeah. Scar face. Like he's, yeah, he's he got looks like a, like a scar bad motherfucker. Running yeah, yeah. down his face. And then he's like, I, 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 I'm busy this weekend. I got to take my doctor to so- daughter to sock to practice. Yeah. Got a doctor's point, whatever. So he hires the next guy down who's like hard as nails, but a little bit less. Like he's yeah. just he's a little bit normal. He's like the fancy dress, nice, right. Uh, like right, well right. kept guy. And he's, yeah. he's like, no, I can't, almost, I can't almost, do it this weekend. You almost think of Hans Gruber. Yes. And like, uh, like, like he, he was, just <laughs> keeps going down yeah. until you get to like. Some fucking pud who's who's like uh, robbed a convenience store once, maybe twice. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same it's convenience just been store. Offered to and, kill somebody for twenty k. <laughs> and the only thing he robbed from that convenience store was a couple of, like microwave burritos and some cup yeah. noodles. Like, yeah, yeah, he's like. And it, then the second time he got like two hundred yuan. And now he's being offered, and he's like, "Oh my god, I don't know what to do. Uh, this doesn't seem like enough money." Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm gonna kill you. You want to fake your death so I don't have to? <laughs> yeah, basically. Make this easy for me. Jesus fucking Christ. So basically, Tan will serve uh, five years in jail, and the hitman he hired to do the D, Zing Gunwa, will serve three years and do six in six months. Mm-hmm. Hitman number two, Mo Zhang Zhang, will serve three years, while Hitman three and four. I was hoping they'd all go down by one. 
Kang Kang Shang Shen. I don't know how to pronounce these names. I'm so sorry if I'm fucking these up. Sorry. And Yang Wai Shang were given the same sentence of three years and three months. Mm-hmm. Hitman Fine Ling Jingji, so the guy who the guy who ran on out was given the shortest sentence of two years and seven months. Yeah, that's fucking great. That's mm-hmm. just so good. It's just, <laughs> it's just. I just hope that the oh the businessman and like the first three hitmen are in the same prison. So he's just looking at him like you fucking assholes. <laughs> I mean, this is this is just it's just hilarious though, like how this unraveled. Oh my god! All right, so well, that, that's typical business in China. They take it, I guess, one step further from what the people said about it. Uh, it's they always try and go with the lowest cost without thinking about anything else or involved. Anything else. Yeah, it's always they always to try and do that. It's a fucking just stupid, stupid decision to make. Which I mean, I can be like, all right, I, I'm, I'm totally on board with trying to save money, yeah. right? Like, cost conscious is is fine. It's great, but, but you, you gotta have th- to, you have to assume. You gotta do quality. some Q and A, man. Yeah, you gotta do some Q and A, some quality insurance. You gotta do some quality insurance, man. A good example of that, and to, uh, to take a sidestep from the news is stupid, but still being news is stupid, um, is Bethesda. Yes. And everything they've done with Fallout 76. Oh my 76, god, yes. From the shitty ass liquor that they did no quality testing on to the fucking bags to this news story where the other day they decided to offer a subscription service for Fallout 76 that would get you a bunch of just in-game dumb tat. I think the most the <clears throat> I, I from what hearing about the game the scrap storage yeah. sounds to be about one of the better things they offer. Which you know um, I, I agree with Jim Sterling when he said that that's a, a problem they created to sell you exactly. a solution to totally one hundred percent. But this I, is, yeah, this is them selling a solution to a problem they put in the game, just like Ubisoft making a game be a grindy <clears throat> ass fest and then selling you a way to make that quicker. Right. Um, that's that's that that's what they're doing here. Plus lots of other dumb, uh, like cosmetic bullshit. Yeah, like you get you get like the a private uh, server, quote unquote private server for you and up to seven other friends. Yeah, yeah. Which um, I don't know how that's like really. Why would you? I, I, okay, I guess if you <clears throat> wanted private, I don't know how. Un- I mean, apparently, apparently, uh, that's something the community's been asking for for a while. Yeah, private servers. Yeah. Um. So they're like, all right, we'll give it to you, but we're gonna make you pay for you it. Gonna pay for it. Which, Which doesn't surprise me. I mean, all right. On the one hand, they have server upkeep, right? So I completely yeah. understand they got to pay for that. Um, so it's like, okay, I kind of get that. You know, it's like having a Minecraft private server so that you and your friends can build shit without yeah. worrying about griefers. Fine. I get that. It's just, you know. But you can run those yourself. Right. You can run those yourself. Like, yeah. you, the, the software is available that you can download, install it, and run it yourself. Yeah. Um, so it's like, okay, that's cool. But my thing is, you know, like, why not sell the server separate? Right. You Um, know, Battlefield does that. Right. They they did. I don't know if they still do that with five. Right. Um, Battlefield, I think four did it. I want to say Battlefield one offered you could rent or like host private servers. Right. There was a cost associated to it. I don't remember how much, but it was specific to that thing. Right. This is like an addition to all these other monthly bullshit. Right. Um, and I don't know what the monthly cost is. I'm still aghast that the yearly cost is a hundred fucking dollars. It's twelve ninety nine a month. Twelve ninety. Oh my fucking god. Yeah. So you can either pay about twelve bucks a month. I think it's like eleven ninety nine. So it's like twelve Whatever bucks a month. That's the price on Xbox year. Live like five years ago. Yeah. Like, I'm 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 I'll pass. Thanks. I'll continue playing on Steam. I'll take a very hard pass. Yeah. I'm not going to play that shit-ass game anyway. But. I'm going to play games on Steam where I don't have to pay any cost yeah. at all. You know? My The thing I find funniest about this is how populated are these servers that that a private server is really... like. I, some people want them, but like... <laughs> I mean, apparently it's, it's bad enough in the game that resource management can be a problem... In oh, the fact that you can't find resources, yet. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when it comes to the private servers, mm-hmm. they're broken. Yeah. Oh. So let's, yeah, let's go that, through this point by so point. So the new the new news that's just come out yeah. after they've offered this service that the pri- private servers yeah. are not private. Okay. They're uh, not some, working. Somebody sat there, paid for it. A bunch of people have, and they've all reported that there's been evidence of people coming through these private servers. Mm-hmm. 
before they even got on the fucking game and have looted things. There's evidence, you know, shit's moved around, shit's destroyed, things are missing. I wonder if they're quote-unquote private servers are old servers that just they haven't been, like, uh, populating. Yeah. It, it, and yeah. then they've just, been, you now they're using those as private. So they didn't, st- <laughs> so it's almost like they didn't state, oh, by the way, all the resources are already going to be picked clean. Yeah. Which is the point people want a private server for. Right. But now they're going to let you use this server. No one else is there. Aren't you happy? No, motherfucker. That's nothing Everything's to do. gone. I can't find my duct tape. Now, um, you move on a little bit. The next <laughs> oh, point, God. the unlimited scrap, uh, the scrap storage. storage. Um, it's actually deleting scrap. <laughs> it's not storing your scrap. It's deleting it. The thing it's supposed to do. The, the one thing it was designed to do, which was hold as much scrap as you could possibly manage and yeah. gather... It it doesn't, which is a is a big thing for that game because it's all about hoarding scrap because that's how you build things and upgrade things and do your crafting system. And God, I hate crafting systems. I mean, I don't I don't mind crafting systems if the context is is, is white, right? Yeah. But like, yeah, I, context I, is white. <laughs> Sorry, but that was a great slip. Thanks, Freudian. Thanks, yeah, Freud. Thanks, Freud. You asshat. You fucking dick. Oh, um, do you love your mother? <laughs> but yeah, like like it makes sense when it's yeah. correct, you know, when it's done well. Sometimes I, like, I, I don't can mind forgive it. them. Yeah, I'm just at that point where it's been in so much that I see it, and even when and it works, and I like it in a game. Yeah, I'm still like, God fucking crafting, goddamn fucking bullshit. Yeah, like I like the way Destiny Two does crafting. I I, I kind of like the way Destiny Two does crafting. Yeah, there's there's crafting resources, but it doesn't feel like. It doesn't feel like a crafting, like, oh, I got to go. I got to go find 30 things of duct tape and yeah. so I can make this, this weapon. It's, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like you're a doing little things, lighter MMO crafting. Yeah, yeah, you're doing things you're already enjoying and then the crafting is like bonus for it, right? Like that's how I feel Destiny It's the end game it. stuff where you're yeah. collecting things and a lot of the stuff you get from doing harder yeah quests and whatnot so it's not it doesn't feel like i'm going and searching for hours around a planet you can do that i sure but it's much want. faster to go and actually do missions and quests yeah and get those, to get those items yeah, yeah. um but yeah like, all right so <sighs> that's just funny I, I i i bethesda is just them and ea with uh anthem and we've talked about them before. EA has kind of just put their head in the sand, mm-hmm. and they're just avoiding talking about it now. Yeah. Um, oh my god! Yeah. All right. So, did you know Outer Worlds came out like the other day? Did it? Yeah. And I realized I forgot. I was thinking to myself, why I was really hyped for this game. Why am I not like why Why did I not know it was coming out? Mm-hmm. And then I realized the reason is because it's a fucking epic exclusive. Uh, so that's why I yeah. didn't know it came out. Uh, However, I don't know exactly on gameplay and stuff. I saw online where a lot of people were mocking um, graphically because um, it's kind of got that, like, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas. All the characters have the same fucking look. All the characters have the same potato face. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at, like, screenshots and shit from the yeah. official Steam page, and it's like... It doesn't. It doesn't look like a like a. It, it's definitely not a visually stunning game. I mean, it doesn't look which like, isn't what I would play it for anyway. I, yeah, but it doesn't look like it's a new game. Um, it doesn't look like it's a game that should be available in this day and age. Like the faces look kind of okay. This guy kind of looks like Nathan Fillion, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm sitting here looking at these. It's like. Okay, this is this is not bad, but it honestly looks like it looks a little dated graphically. It looks like a mod Skyrim or Fallout Three playthrough. Like it looks like it looks like where somebody just took um, Fallout Three or Fall. Hey, not, not even not as even, long as it's not the same engine, I don't care. Yeah, no, it's definitely not. Um, but like what it looks like is somebody took Fallout New Vegas or yeah. Fallout Four. Which one of those were more gray? I would say Fallout Four, right? Uh, new- Fallout 4 was less colorful. That's what I'm going for. 
I would s- probably. I'm yeah, I would say it's between more between the two. I would say it's more drab, right? So yeah, it looks like somebody. New took, Vegas was very. It was a desert setting, but so. but it was Vegas, so it was very. They had colorful buildings. Well, and stuff. yeah, no, they're very, both very similar in that respect. Okay, Fallout well, always is great. Okay, and I guess it doesn't matter which yeah. one you're looking at. I would say Fallout Four though, just because it is a little bit better graphically. Yeah, um, it looks like somebody took that, added a bright, colorful foliage mod. And then put an E and B on it. Yeah. To make it look to make things a little smoother. Like that's what it looks like to me. When um, it comes to these games though, just like other big games in the <clears> like <throat> as long as the game is good, yeah. I will very much yeah, no, ignore absolutely. that. Because like, this is this is done by um Obsidian. They developed Fallout New Vegas, which I had tons and tons of problems with bugs and graphic the graphics weren't really great. Um, Lots but, of bugs were hilariously uh, oh God, horrendous, so bad, horrendous. Well, because and horrifying. Like the development you... time Bethesda gave them was absolute, te- absolutely awful. Yeah, they were demanding the game be done, and then they denied giving them um, the bonus they promised because the game was like one point off the Metacritic score that they wanted, even one though the game sold. Off. Even though the game sold gangbusters. Yeah. Um, but I love Fallout New Vegas' story is and and like the gameplay, it they did Fallout better than Bethesda did with Fallout Three, one hundred percent. I mean that's not really surprising. Uh, well, no, Fallout Three is an amazing game as well. Right, Fallout Three is no no joke of a but game. But what I'm saying is, is like it's not surprising that they did something that Bethesda does better than Bethesda does. Because I, don't, I mean, I don't uh, know what uh, Obsidian did before that. Yeah, but. For a smaller studio to make the upgrades they did, mm-hmm. that was what was impressive. But I mean, even just the simple story stuff, which isn't so much a technical standpoint, yeah. But they made a much more compelling story, many more interesting characters. Right, right. Um, yeah. They have like six factions that all matter. Um, were Fallout, um, like Fallout Four, for example, there are three. Yeah. And the endings are pretty mediocre. Yeah. At, at best. At, at, best yeah so i mean New I, vegas is so, like so the, above the, and beyond the point that i was going to get to mm-hmm. um with bethesda is that and it's something i have noticed um mm-hmm. because i've been playing uh like elder scrolls games or what i'm going to have to draw the parallel to because that's their other big franchise very similar yeah um morrowind story-wise i thought was amazing there is so much depth to that game mm-hmm. And then you you get um, you get Oblivion released, and it's not quite that same level. You can see where they're trying to make it a bit more user friendly. Yes, in yeah. both gameplay and story. But what that does is it dumbs that story yes. down. So like Morrowind's up here, Oblivion's a little bit lower, mm. and maybe right right here, and then you get the Skyrim where there is almost no story. It's just it's just yeah. down here, and it's just. Go kill thing. That that's basically what it amounts to. Go yeah. kill thing before he kills you. The the thing where I was I, honestly with Skyrim, I was kind of looking like, okay, the story's gonna be. This is where I'm gonna find the story. Right. With like, you go and talk to the blades, uh, and their side thing. I'm like, oh, here we go, the blades, because I had they. they yeah, were no, they're, they're, they're a huge part oblivion. of Oblivion. Yeah, nope. and they're they're incredible. They're nothing. They're in a them. huge part in Morrowind too. Like yeah. you, you actually like if you follow the main storyline, you work for the blades. Mm-hmm. So it's like, huh? And then in Skyrim, they just kind of. They it, kind it's of, a side thing that doesn't matter. Nope. And then the main quest line, like you said, that there the war is just you you feel like an observer the whole time. Yeah. You are um, definitely an outsider. Yeah. Even if you play as a race that would be native to Skyrim, you mm-hmm. still feel like an outsider. You know, it's even like, though you're the one that's doing literally everything. Yeah. That's what's annoying. It's it's one of <clears> the like, reasons I don't know. Like that that's kinda how it goes too. Morrowind is you are a prisoner. Mm-hmm. who for some reason got conscripted into this plot to do everything and as you go further it opens up and becomes more epic and now you're like a struggle for the land whereas oblivion is kind of similar in that oh, way all three games you're a prisoner right and then you get swept up into this bigger but oblivion does it so much I, I don't know, like Oblivion just, they spent more money on like voice acting mm-hmm. and character. Mm-hmm. You meet Tiberius Septim and it's um, um, Jean-Luc Picard. You uh, mean Ariel Septim. Ariel Septim, sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
and it's the that that I, now I can't think of fucking uh the, the guy's name. Are you talking about Patrick Stewart? Patrick Stewart. Yeah, he does the voice. Yeah. Um, and he's, it's interesting. Like, I, okay, I got to say, I want to. I I, I do want to throw this out there to any yeah. game developer who might be listening. Um, big time, small time, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you can get Patrick Stewart to do a voice in your game, yeah. especially a big one, it doesn't matter how terrible the game is. I will at least try it. Probably, yeah. I I just want to hear him talk. As long as he's not playing the poo emoji. Yeah, like <laughs> Patrick Stewart's one game. of the. You know, Patrick Stewart for me is one of those people like uh, uh, Morgan Freeman, Sam or Jackson. James Earl Jones, Sam Jackson, where you just want to listen to them talk. Yeah. It's like, I don't know why his voice is so soothing. And like I, to add to that, something that I love is that his Twitter, I don't know if it still is, but I know for the longest time, his Twitter picture was just a picture of his face in a ball pit mm-hmm. <laughs> with all the light shining on it. it. Was and I was great. like, this is amazing. I don't even know why. Um, but yeah, I, I, but so but this is fucking with, up with, man. with uh, obsidian and right. In uh, New Vegas, they they really did make a make a game that mm-hmm. stood out, right? And everyone was excited. People really wanted to see their take on the next Fallout, and Bethesda was like, "No, they don't get to play with the keys anymore." So now they went and did their own thing, which I, is I, Outer Worlds, which is why it was really really hype until they went and went exclusive to the Epic Store. Yeah. Which sucks. I mean, it's... Okay, so The Outer Worlds hasn't even released on Steam because it won't be for, what, six months? Um, it released today yeah, on the 20... It, it released today, actually. Um, oh, did... Okay. Yeah. So it's like... Uh, and apparently, they're going to be doing a Nintendo Switch version. Really? Yeah. Well, that's, um, that's that's Yeah, that is interesting. I don't give a shit about it. But, you know... But any... Uh, one more thing I want to make... Mm-hmm. Um, like another point that I I was getting to, and I got sidetracked or whatever when it came to the storyline of the Elder Scrolls games, where it, like I'm all for trying to make it appealing to as many people as possible because you want people to play your game, you want people to buy your game, you want people to enjoy your game. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people will, will shit on games for not having a good story, or having terrible cheap mechanics that aren't like you know super niche or something. I, I kind of agree with them. Like, one thing I would have loved to see in Skyrim is, like, a dedicated magic casting key, like you had in Oblivion. Yeah. But, um, which, by the way, you didn't have that in Morrowind. They wanted... They, <clears throat> but like, they, I like, get why they wanted to go with uh, right. spells as their own thing. It's, right. it's understandable, but yeah. But, like, you, you can definitely see where the dumbing down and the paring down was present in Skyrim. Because you look at, like, you look at Morrowind, um, when it comes to, like, character voices and lines and stuff, there are some that you, you, you'll you hear over and over again, mm-hmm. but then there are many NPCs who do have unique voices. Now, granted, with Morrowind, voice acting wasn't as big a thing. It, you, you mostly got single-line dialogue when, like, you walked up to somebody and they would say something to you. Yeah. Like, hi, Outlander, or whatever. Uh, but there were way more unique dialogues I mean, way more unique voice actors. The same thing was in oblivion too. You didn't run into where you had the same 12 voice types. You know, there were more voice types. There were more people that spoke. I, that I don't know about because for me playing oblivion and Skyrim, um, the two are very similar for the amount of times you hear the same exact voice actor yeah, you know, for you, people. Okay, I'll, like, I'll probably I, give you that. I can't I don't, say, I and I know maybe... there are more lines in Skyrim than there are in Oblivion. Right. Like, just written lines, period. There's there's more written dialogue. Um, but I uh, to me, it's the, it's pretty similar with number of voices. Okay. Because I can literally hear in my head the same, hey, uh, like, like the same exact voice from all of the uh, guards in Oblivion versus all of the guards in Skyrim, which pretty much all have that same, what do you doing outlander? <laughs> like, okay. So I, I, maybe I'll give you that one. Yeah. Um, like where, because I don't have nearly as much experience. I have like maybe 15 hours of Oblivion. Yeah. Cause it's harder for me to get into mm-hmm. because I never had the hook that got me in there in the first place. Cause I never played it. Yeah. Yeah. But th- that's the problem I see in Skyrim though, where you only have so many voice types. And while there are a lot of different voice types, they're all done by, like, the same voice actors. It's difficult for those games because there's so much. I would say there's, like, 
12 voice actors, maybe 16. It seems like there's so um, few. But then you look at a game like The Witcher 3 or like any other game with a lot of – like every voice is unique, you know? Almost every voice is it unique. It feels that way, but – I know that when you compare it to the amount of dialogue, the amount of people you can hold a conversation with, yeah, it it doesn't even come close. Right? No, I, it doesn't. I, but even, but, but even like even when you look at the unique characters, of which there are I've a lot in thought, Witcher Three. That I will say is I've always thought that Bethesda one thing they needed to do, and I, unless I'm misremembering, Fallout Four did that better, mm-hmm. where main characters, characters that had lots of different dialogue. They had their own voice actors and then lots of the other wastelanders and and people and raiders. They were reused more. But when it came to the main like main quest line, people that you encountered in that they were they had specific voices. Yeah. Like even someone like there's this little old lady that you meet early on that's addicted to chems that stays in your camp. I think she was the only one with her voice as well. Right. Um, There's a few that get used, but for the most part. They all, and I think they did better with that in Fallout 4. Uh, um, but I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. 100%. Like, 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 that's one thing I did, did bother me in Skyrim. I think the that, biggest dumbing down yeah. for those games, and with Skyrim, I think it did it the worst, was they wanted to make it easier to make more content. Right. So they came up with the random dungeon generator so that they could tote, oh, there's always a new quest and everything will be new. When in reality, you're going through the same exact almost the same exact looking places, the same exact looking, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Say, the exact same thing that's just been a little bit different. You're fighting the same Drogar, the same yep. enemies, or Falmor. Or and, bandits. Yeah. Or a or dwarf and automatons. Or bears. <laughs> or bears. Yeah. So uh, maybe maybe there'll be a, a, a fucking tree spirit thing. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Like, yeah, if you go to a grove for some reason. Yeah. But yeah, those were all always the same to make it easier so that they could make the game bigger. But they also, they, they, they hurt themselves because that's the way the, the, even the storyline quests feel. Yeah. Is they uh, like, end up like, doing the same thing. Yeah, when you look at it uh, and you look at the variety, mm-hmm. there's only like, like Ulfric, his, his voice is unique. Mm-hmm. Um uh, General Tullius, his voice is unique. Yeah. And I know there are others whose voices are unique. Obviously, the dragons have unique voices. No one else mm-hmm. sounds like the dragons. Arngear has his own voice. But then you look at the rest of them, like, like I, I know I've heard Delphine's voice in other characters. Mm-hmm. Esbern might have a unique voice. I know I've heard Legate Ricky's voice on other characters. Like, these are all big-time players. Yeah. But you hear their – in many instances, you can hear their voices I know repeated. they take – and even the, the specific voice actors, yeah. they will do different quote-unquote voices. They're not talking the same, but you can kind of tell it's the same person. Yeah. I think in Fallout, they did a better job of them sounding Dif- different. Right. Um, so it doesn't sound like the same – like it's talking to you. But it's like you sit there and you, you, you hear – like, like I, I don't care so much for the dialogue. But when you sit there, you hear 18 different NPCs that all have the same exact voice. It's like, okay, that's a little weird. Um, I don't know. But I get it, too, at the same time. There's a lot of stuff to do. So, taking away, what was it that they took away in Fallout? Um, Oh, they gave your character a voice in Fallout 4. Yeah, so the personalization was less... I think was a a bit of a mistake. I do too. Like I, Um, like people want to bitch and whine and complain and moan about the silent protagonist. I think in games like Fallout and and New Vegas and and like games like that, you need to have that silent protagonist if you are to immerse yourself in the role. And I didn't, I didn't hate the guy in (laughs) Fallout Four. I thought it was done well. Yeah. But yeah, I I would have, I would have preferred that. Um, The big thing with Fallout Four, and again. For the dumbing down of those games, um, Fallout 4 did a better job with quests. It didn't get to be the same, samey, same, same right. as Skyrim. But at the same time, um, leveling up and all that was dumbed down. Uh, they did it better, a little bit better in Skyrim because mm-hmm. they Fallout uses perks instead of um, the exact way the, the, the Elder Scrolls games have you level up. Uh, and I think it's a better system. I mean, Skyrim uses perks too. Yeah, that's where they took the system it's, from. They're a bit different. Um, they they just it's it's way better in Fallout than it is in Skyrim. You get more perks and you have different things that you use points on rather than 
it's kind of almost similar to Oblivion's point system. But either way, either way, it's very, it's still very different. Yeah. But that's the thing. That's one of those things that has actually kind of been better because I like Skyrim's system is way, way better than Oblivion's. Right. I could not. It took me two or three characters before I even sort of figured out the way Oblivion's uh, leveling and skill system worked. Right. It was a pain in the ass. I mean, Morrowind's was pretty similar. Um, yeah, so like, but they had there was more to it. Spears were their own thing, and there's lots and lots of even more. Yeah, where they've kind of simplified it, which is not always a bad thing. Mm. Um, but it's unfortunate that they simplified the story and then they cut down on you know unique areas and yeah. things like yeah. that with the game. Um, Fallout Four just kind of it feels like after a while you're not playing for any reason other than I'm going to get to the end so I can loot all the duct tape. Yeah. And I don't, Super the end chest doesn't matter because all I'm going to get is stuff that I'm going to scrap anyway. Yeah. There are no unique items. There are no, you, technically when you kill a legendary enemy, you get a what item with a ability, but they don't really matter that much. It's mm -hmm. unless you're playing on absolute hardcore mode. Um, it's just, you you need mods to make those games better. Right. Whereas New Vegas, while it had its problems that mods helped fix, um, itself had weapon mods and things like that already built in. It ha it just had more. It's why I, I really do want to play The Outer Worlds. Um, I just find it funny that, like, they, they've gone with just the most simplest faces and stuff that they could. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that's essentially what we were talking about, and then we all went off on... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so stuff. let's get back to because uh, this episode is going to be mostly news and stupid, um, just because there's so much good shit. There's just a lot of it. Um, a uh, British officials have created a 41 mile detour for a 65 foot long road closure. So you 65 foot, yeah. If you're driving, say at a normal 30 miles per hour, it takes half a second. <laughs> Um, and now you have to go 41 miles out of your way in order to get around this little road closure. Um, the small just, section of road A3, A352 in Godsman Stone Dorset will be closed Monday through Friday while construction crews work on a new sewer system. I was like, okay, that's, um, all right. I can't not see the people who are doing this road work and like setting up the barriers and like, oh, we'll just do it around. I cannot not see the idiot cops from Hot Fuzz. Like the chick <laughs> and the two guys that look similar. Yeah. Like that's who I envision deciding that, oh, we'll just have them go around. Like. <laughs> 60 feet for 40 something miles. Yeah. Yeah. That is just um, crazy. Like the, the, uh, and like, well, I'm looking at the map where this is at. It's like, it doesn't need, why, why are you creating that detour that goes all the way around when they're like, <laughs> Like, why? What? Like, just have them... Why? It's somebody... It sounds like somebody got lost as they were putting the detour signs out. Yeah. So they just kept putting it at every turn they made. Well, like, most of... It, it, it's literally just you go all the way up here. You take a right. You go all yeah. the way over here. You take another right. Go all the way down. Take a right, then a left, and boom, there you are. That's funny. It's like it's incredible though, like a forty-one mile detour for for two sec two seconds of driving now becomes an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, it's like what the fuck? <laughs> I don't get it, man. But hey, that's that's what happens. Now, some of you guys may have heard about this, yeah, um, because it's a big day. It's a big deal, and I know Fox News would have made a really big deal out of this because they are sucking Republicans' cocks all the time. Because they're the conservative. They're very story. balanced. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, Twelve Republicans who stormed closed door impeachment proceedings had already had permission to attend. So, like, I know Fox News would have made this a big deal. Like, oh my God, they're doing all this dramatic shit. But no, they're really not. They're just being assholes. Um, many of the House Republicans who on Wednesday stormed a closed door hearing that was part of the impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump would have been allowed to go inside if they wanted. More than 30 Republicans forced their way into the hearing, delaying it for about five hours. They now face allegations of na risking national security. <laughs> Twelve of those 30 were already able to attend the hearing as they sit on relevant committees, but they said they entered to protest its secrecy. Long-standing rules say witnesses should be interviewed in a classified setting. House Democrats said they will hold open hearings once their initial investigation is done. So, 
these guys being dumbasses did this. It's like, why? They did it in protest. They did it in protest. What does this guy have to do for them to go, huh, maybe we shouldn't back him anymore? Like, does he have to literally sacrifice a child on live TV? Does, no, he can shoot someone in the street. Does he have to, like, go so far as to maybe go into pedophilia on live TV? I don't get it. Like, what does he have to do? What does he have to do? Has he not done enough terrible shit? <sighs> All right. One more story. Um, man sues AT&T after a fraudulent SIM swap led to a $1.8 million cryptocurrency theft. $1.8 million. That, that is a lot of fucking money for something as simple as that. A lawsuit against AT&T alleged that the security's employees helped hackers perform SIM swap attacks on a customer and rob them of $1.8 million worth of cryptocurrency. Plaintiff Seth Shapiro of Torrance, California, said AT&T is liable for the act of his employees and failed to implement systems and procedures to prevent them from pulling off the scheme. The complaint filed on October 17th in U.S. District Court for the Central District of California says... On at least four occasions between the 16th of May and, and the 18th of May, uh, 2018 to 2019, basically a year and a little bit, AT&T employees obtained unauthorized access to Mr. Shapiro's AT&T wireless account, viewed as confidential and proprietary personal information, and transferred control over to over Mr. Shapiro's AT&T wireless number from his phone to a phone controlled by third-party hackers in exchange for money. The oh. hackers then utilized their control over Shapiro's AT&T wireless number including control secured through cooperation with uh, with T employees to access his personal and digital financial accounts and steal more than two. Just about, yeah. That is insane. And I bet insane. they wish they did this like six years ago. Right. <laughs> well, that was probably like well, two million. A few years ago when that was, I mean, that wasn't that long ago. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was like three years ago. We were talking like 2016, uh, right, 2017. Right, right before I bought crypto. Yeah. Wasted money in it. Yeah. Um, I would have been nice to buy like twenty five dollars worth of Bitcoin and have it balloon to like a million. <laughs> That's fucking yeah. Like if I had That's known insane. about uh, it's one of those things where like I'm looking back like I wish I had known about cryptocurrency in like two thousand eight. Known and had any like interest in thought it. that yeah, yeah, this could be a way to invest or something like that. Right. Like and I'm all about like stuff like that too. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but uh in a swim, uh, but basically, what a, sw a sim swap attack is is where you know it you you pretend to be someone and get their sim cards. It's their interesting that he that this time it was actual fraud. Like, yeah, they he, they the employees knew exactly what they were doing. Where AT and T and other companies have had lots of problems with people calling in and saying, "Oh, I'm this person. I need to get my account switched. I forgot my password." Yada yada. And they're just like, "Oh, okay, no problem. Here you mm -hmm. go," mm -hmm. and just give the person access. Yeah. And this has happened with like celebrities where their the information's gotten leaked and and with lots and lots of people. Yeah. This time, it like I said, it's 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 legit. Like these employees are going down. Yeah. Um, for Shapiro whatever. Black backs his lawsuit up with details from a criminal case fired by the U.S. government. So like this is this yeah. is legit against nine people, including former AT and T employees Robert Jack and Jarrett White. Yeah. Criminal investigations revealed that a third party um, paid Jack and White to change the SIM card associated with Mr. Shapiro's AT and T account from the SIM card in, in his phone to a SIM card on a phone controlled by JD, who is the third party individual yeah. I mentioned just a little bit ago. Um, JD paid White four to three hundred dollars to conduct SIM swaps, including the swaps in May 2018 that targeted Shapiro, and paid five hundred eighty-five dollars and twenty-five cents mm -hmm. to yeah. Like, like, that's insane, they knew, this, man. they knew exactly who they were going after, that right. this guy had money. Yeah. Um, these employees were prolific SIM swappers, with White conducting oh, wow. 29 unauthorized SIM swaps in May 2018, and Jack conducting 12 unauthorized, unauthorized SIM swaps that same month. So, um, basically, this dude put his money in the, in the cryptocurrency, was really seriously backing it, and they found out somehow, somebody knew, and somebody paid these guys to swap his shit. I wonder how much this guy lost in cryptocurrency, though. If he had a million dollars, and assume we assume Bitcoin, just because it's the easiest to assume. Yeah. Um, if it was anything else, then he lo might have lost even bigger, because that's an insane amount to have in something like Dogecoin. Um... <laughs> The digital currency stolen during the SIM swap attacks also included cryptocurrency raised by Shapiro for a business venture. As a result of that, Shapiro had to end the venture and lay off all the employees, which really sucks, right? 
Here's where it gets interesting I'm, to me. Yeah. Um, this is not the first such lawsuit filed against AT&T. Nope. The company was also sued by a man named Michael Turpin, who says that AT&T allowed a SIM swap pack that cost him nearly $24 million worth of cryptocurrency. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. I bet that happened during the boom. <clears throat> um, in July, a federal judge allowed Turpin's suit against AT&T to move forward despite AT&T's arguments that Turpin didn't adequately explain how the phone hack led to the loss of his cryptocurrency and that AT&T shouldn't be held responsible for the misconduct of hackers who stole the cryptocurrency. Turpin recently wrote an open letter to the FCC, Chairman Pai, uh-huh. Chairman, oh God, uh, urging him to issue new security requirements that carriers would have to follow to prevent SIM swap attacks. When contacted by ours about the Shapiro case, at and says... We dispute these allegations and look forward to presenting our case in court. AT&T also noted that it provides customers with information about SIM swap scans at this webpage, but did not provide any specific information during Superior's allegations. Yeah. Dispute, despite disputing Superior's lawsuit, AT&T says on our website that it is improving its technology and training to reduce the likelihood of SIM swap attacks. Okay. Yeah. That's all I can say. So, okay. So, I mean, they do kind of, in a way, have a point. Mm-hmm. Of how are we liable for what they did when they stole? Yeah, we're liable because they stole, they they did the sim swap. Yeah, or maybe they maybe they should argue that they're not because these employees did it of their own accord. Like they, okay, I I want to say yeah. I mean, but I get at the they same should time, have security. Like, right? Yeah, you hired these people. Yeah, they're accessing your systems. You're allowing them to access your systems. I don't you're, think you're a little bit complicit in this too. I don't think they could held be held liable for the full amount type is what I'm saying. Right. Um like I don't know, I'm trying to think of a of a an a, a example it would but the closest thing I can think of is like a bank. Yeah. Someone robs a bank and they rob, you know, they steal your money. Um but you entrust them to keep that money safe. Right. Whereas in this case you've voluntarily put that information on the phone they've stolen the sim card they've gotten that information okay no 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 this is, is that this, not it's not what this is no okay. this is an instance where the basically the guy was using 2fa two-factor authentication and yeah. the, the companies that he was using that two-factor authentication with used his number to send him his two-factor authentication code. Yeah, so they... So it was it was that. AT&T failing to keep that part safe yeah. because someone was able to take his number, get his two-factor authentication code, and then break into his shit. Yeah. So it wasn't negligence on his part in any way. No, no, it I'm wasn't, not saying negligence on the person's it, it, part. It, it wasn't any, any problem on his part. Yeah. He was using a security measure that was in place... So, and, and AT&T failed to keep that safe. To protect his number. Right. They failed it to was, protect his personal information. You had yeah. somebody within their network that they hired, that they chose to represent their company in, in some yeah. light, and that person acted, you know, without any sort of scruples, without any sort of uh, yeah. integrity, and was swayed by $4,300, and in one instance, as little as 500 bucks. Yeah. Sit there and, and do this and hurt people. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. It's, yeah. It's still, I guess it's not, AT&T didn't promise, put your million dollars on an, on our phone number, we'll 100% protect it the way like a bank. Right. No, would. but but it's but also. That's uh, why I'm saying they shouldn't be on the hook for the whole thing. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't expect them to I, be anyway. I, would, I argue it in a different light um, because it doesn't matter. Like, that doesn't matter, in my mm-hmm. honest opinion, because AT&C says, here's your number. This is yours. Yeah. You know, this is your private information. That's what they're protecting. That's what they need to be protecting. Yeah. It doesn't matter what's tied to that personal information in, in the light of cryptocurrencies or whatever like that. They still have that duty to protect that information, make sure it doesn't get out to people, make sure people who should not have access to it have access to it. Yeah. And in this instance, they failed to do that. So I don't know if they should be on hold for all 1.8 million, and honestly, that is up for the courts to decide. Maybe the courts decide you're you're owed so much more. Maybe they'll decide you're you're going to only get 500 thousand back, whatever. Yeah. But I still think that this case has merit. Obviously, I know I know you do oh, too. Oh no, yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. Like 100, percent you should sue for this. They didn't protect him, even if it was the employees. Mm-hmm. And they they acted themselves. It wasn't. It wasn't a lack of training. If anything, it was no. maybe a lack of like mm-hmm. verification on people's parts. Yeah. But again, the dude did it for like 
thousands of dollars. The one was five hundred dollars. Yeah, one of them. One of them was but, paid forty, forty six hundred, forty three hundred, whatever. Yeah. The other guy was paid five hundred twenty five dollars and some shit. Like, come on, dudes. Yeah, it's it's hard to say to guarantee people. Yeah. You know, when you're talking about that kind of money. Right. Um, because I, you know, AT and T's not paying these guys a fucking decent wage. I mean, that forty three hundred was probably like. You know, a quarter of that guy's paycheck or something like that. Forty three hundred dollars. Well, what is this? I mean, this guy might not be anybody but a fucking call center worker. Right, but he's a call center worker who has access to personal information. True. So I mean, it's a little bit more than that. I, but, yeah, but I'm sure forty three hundred I mean, is probably a month's a lot pay of money. for this guy. Well, maybe two months' pay. But yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, like that's that. This is not a small sum for this guy. Right. Um. Which, yeah, I. I it's just amazing to me, you know. Basically, yeah, no, this guy should totally be paid paid out something, man. Yeah. He should get something. We need to have a better system than SIM cards. Like, there needs to be something that immediately alerts you or some type of better verification for, mm-hmm. like, SIM swapping. Yeah. Because that's just, that seem, it seems too easy. And again, this is like people taking money to do it. This isn't even the worst, like, the worst, the, the, the like, most um uh like it's been done by people who've just said hey i'm this person oh okay let me take care of that for you and just swapped it yeah like it's this time it almost seems like oh we have a bad guy these guys took money and then they committed fraud (laughs) when it's it's been so much easier in the past yeah um it's why it's just I don't I, I, I remember back when Verizon didn't use uh, they didn't pull SIM cards. Yeah, they didn't. You bought no. the phone and it was tied to network. Yeah. In, in order for you to swap phones, you had to buy another you phone had to from go them. Get a brand new phone and you had to get it from yeah Verizon. And you had to put your your MEID in mm-hmm. and, and get it all registered on the network. Yeah, I remember that too. Yeah, I, I kind of like, like I'm I'm torn personally. Yeah. Like I'm very very torn. It is like, easier like, with SIM card. Right. Like, 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 I love the convenience of SIM cards. Like, mm-hmm. I like being able to take the SIM out of one phone, put it in another, and keep going as if everything is fine. Yeah. I love being able to upgrade my phone that way. I love that freedom. But at the same time, if it's this easy to get my number transferred to another SIM card, like, that is bothersome. It's one of those things where it's like, like, I, like you always caution, you know, always be careful with what you're doing with your money, what yeah. you've got it tied to your tool. If you've got a million dollars in, in Bitcoin or any type of online venture, probably have it set to a phone that is, that no one knows. I mean, no one okay. has that number. No, no, no. I'm going to go something. even further than that and say that if you're going to have that much money, yeah. have a two factor authentication method that doesn't depend on your phone number. Yeah. And if you're something going to go, that can't be compromised, like, and if you're going to go with something like, oh, and and if like the service you're going with mm-hmm. absolutely requires a phone number, mm-hmm. no, mm. phone numbers, and this is something I, I've complained about in the past. Two factor authentication over SMS is the worst, one of the worst and least secure methods. Yeah. Like, SMS is unencrypted, it's open, anybody who is watching or even remotely paying attention can just go intercept your text messages and steal your shit. Yeah. So, if somebody sits there and say, fakes a uh, cell tower, you're fucked, right? And granted, that is way more difficult. But the fact that SMS is so... And this just proves it, because all they had to do was get the SIM swapped to another thing. Another, pardon me, another problem with it and it's like, well, what if you change your number and forget mm-hmm. to swap it? You know, or what if you lose your phone or you lose your number or something happens where you can't pay your phone bill anymore? And or I don't know, like there's so many things that could go wrong in this. Yeah. Whereas saying receiving a two factor authentication code to an email or through an app on an independent device, like that's how I do it. I have a phone sitting in my room locked behind three doors and a and hard encryption and passcode that handles all my two factor authentication for me. Yeah. Right? Like it has it has my authenticator app, it has all my codes in it all the time. Mm-hmm. My apps, because I have multiple authentication apps for different services. Like boom. Which in one instance can be really inconveniencing to me because, you know, you, if I have to, you're always sacrificing convenience for security. Right. But if I'm sitting there, like, let's say I'm out and about 
and I forgot to sign into Twitch one day. Yeah. And now I want to sign into the Twitch on my phone. Well, fuck, I can't because my authenticator code is at home. I'm out here in, yeah. you know, I'm on vacation or something, so I can't do it. Oh, well, fuck it. I guess I'm not watching Twitch. Yeah. But it's like, that's like, that's the kind of, well, I'm, I'm still going to watch Twitch. I just can't participate in anything. Yeah. But that's kind of how it works, you know, but it's like, it, it's worth it to me mm-hmm. because that can't be compromised. That phone's not connected to the internet beyond, well, it is, but it's not connected to any cell phone tower. It's just Wi-Fi. It's just Wi-Fi. It's just there. It's in my house, which by the way, is behind other firewalls, like, and no security is foolproof, but... Mm-hmm. In this instance, you require physical access to the device. You can't get physical access to the device without going through a whole lot of trouble. So, I don't know. It's just me. I, I complained about that at work, too, because we use uh, two-factor authentication, which I applaud, but it's SMS-based, which means mm-hmm. somebody could steal my phone and take my SIM card out, and now they have access to it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I don't know... I think we can bend it off there. Yeah, I it's don't know what else I really want to talk about besides the uh, the company. There's a company now mm-hmm. um, that settles that sells a mini jacuzzi just for your balls. I I still say that that's not that's uh, not news to us too, but this yeah. is just amazing. That's um, just that just sounds like a good product. There's nothing better after a hard day at the office than soaking your bollocks in a bubbling jacuzzi. At uh, least that's the new view of Testacuzzi, a brand new groundbreaking mini hot tub <laughs> tailor made for your two veg. Testacuzzi. Um, yeah, no. See, they even have a great name. Uh. Like, apparently this isn't even, like, a parody or anything. It's an actual website. It's an actual product. Um, Lewis Black used to have this bit where he talked about, I can't remember if he was, it was part of, like, if he was president or if he was super rich, that he would just want to have enough money to hire a personal ball washer. Yes, yeah. And it would be someone who had a salary, uh, nothing (laughs) sexual about it, or they would just bring, like, a hot, wet towel and wash his balls. (laughs) Uh, You know what? The ultimate flex of wealth. (laughs) That that reminds me of, that makes me think of the the guy that Snoop employs to roll his joints for him and his blunts. It just rolls blunts all day. Like, the dude rolls, like, 100 blunts a fucking day, gets paid between 40 and $50,000, and... He has so many perks. Yep. Like being able to smoke the weed he rolls, going backstage to concerts and shit, getting merch he and all goes that. goes everywhere Snoop goes. Yeah, he, he, he travels with Snoop. Snoop. Like, who the fuck? You get paid to hang out with Snoop Dogg. And they, uh, what and smoke weed was with it? Snoop was Dogg. It? Seth Rogen? Seth, yeah, yeah. talked about the, the dude's just there. And it's just anytime Snoop puts his hand out, this dude's got a blunt for him, puts it right in his hand. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Seth Rogen was sitting there talking about how, like, he observed the guy and was just watching him and yeah. was just enamored with with his work. <laughs> this skill of rolling blunts. It's like, that, I want that job. That would be an amazing I, job. I want that job. I need to start practicing my blunt rolling so that I can roll <laughs> amazing blunts. And then I need to apply for that job to somebody I know who smokes a lot of weed. Yeah. Like, hey, Seth Rogen, hire me to be your... Um, I'll just roll blunts for you all day. I'll roll blunts for you all day, man. You don't even need to pay me that much. Pay me what I'm making now. <laughs> And I'll be fine. I think that's uh, that's that's the sort of thing where like Seth Rogen's not gonna have a dude. No, so no, of wants. course that's not. No, Snoop is is that's a Snoop thing. That is very like, much a Snoop thing. Like I mean, Seth Rogen is still person... very much that guy who's rolling his own blunts. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> even though he's rich, even though he's rich as balls, probably does it like in his mom's basement sometimes. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Or, I mean, he's got friends. Like I'm sure with his friend groups, like yeah, most yeah. of those guys, like there's people who just roll. Um. I would say, like, I'd be surprised if Willie Nelson doesn't have somebody who just rolls. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. Rolls joints for him. Yeah. Joe, Willie Nelson so seems like a joint guy to me. Mm-hmm. He smokes joints. He's very much a J guy. Yeah. Very much, yeah. I, he, he just very, he oozes that vibe. Yeah. Whereas Snoop's going to be smoking blunts. I see, I, Seth Rogen is a guy I see smoking out of a bong or a bowl. Yeah. Like we do. Um, but, yeah. Like, I definitely very much see, um, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, man, I used to love, and it was so weird because it was like a show, but not a show. Snoop Dogg had a, a YouTube channel where he did interviews, quote, interviews with people. Yeah. And yeah. the random celebrities. And most of the time you would watch it and it seemed like the show hadn't started because they'd just be sitting there like Snoop be humming something. They'd be they're just kind of like chatting about nothing and they'd just be passing and smoking. Yes. And there were even guests who would like be looking around like, is this the show? <laughs> Like, I remember, did we start? Um, 
Did you see the latest uh, Gabriel Iglesias stand up? Yes. Where he talks about going He was on, on that show. I went and watched it after the fact because I thought it was so goddamn funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That, that's what you made me think of. And then mm. he had his son with him, and his son's like, can I do it? And like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So good. Good shit. Good shit. But, uh, all right, guys, we're going to go ahead and cut it off there. Yep. I hope you enjoyed our, our ramblings and our news of the stupid. And mm-hmm. uh, we did talk about some topical things. You know, we bitched about Fallout 76. We talked about one topical thing. Uh, well, I mean multiple. <laughs> You know, that, that one topical thing branched out a little bit. We complained and talked about things <laughs> and whatever. It's the same shit another day. Always, always. Um, but, yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed that. If you yeah. did, uh, you know, give us some money on Patreon. We could use your, you know. You, if you, you want to help us out there. Or you get some perks just, from it, you know. Yeah. Name and credits and, and we make fun of you. You get access to a Discord. Well, you can do the access to Discord anyway. Yeah, join the Discord. Join it's, the Discord. It's cool. It's lifeless. It's lifeless. Completely <laughs> lifeless. It's like five of us. I mean, there's like seven of us now. <laughs> but yeah, let us know what you guys are up to. Yeah. Give yeah. us a like. If you guys uh, ever had any ideas, you know. I don't know if it matters anymore Twitter. with ratings on Apple, no, whatever no, the fuck we, it is. Like, or I mean, it would have mattered like else? the first two weeks now that we're like two and a half years into this shit it doesn't matter anymore yeah well still give us no yeah still do it you know if you liked us give us some ratings give us five stars give us one star tell us why we suck i don't give a shit and you know hit us up on twitter on golly geeks i i check the account pretty often um post there sometimes uh ideas if you have an idea you want to hear us bitch about it doesn't matter what it is we'll talk about anything there discord whatever I, it could be something like, what about the political climate in Chile? We'll fucking talk about it. We're researching and find out, man. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, for that, that's it. That's all I have. Like, share, subscribe. For the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. Fuck Bethesda. And EA. <laughs>